Darwin. Uh, so probably the, the title should be like non numerical computation of linear stability, but it's a sort of shortcut. So um, it's a working collaboration with Mark Blight from uh, the same uh, university. And um, that's the physical problem. So I have no gravity in these things. Um, <coughs> I have a sheet of uh, fluid and um, an upper and lower boundary. I assume the usual stuff in VC, the incompressible and so on, uh, rotational flow, so I can introduce a velocity potential, which satisfies the Laplace uh, equations in, the, in this uh, fluid sheet. Uh, just uh, sort of uh, remarks. Um, the first to calculate the capillary waves was Krappers, who found the exact solutions in uh, 57. Um, they found that, uh, he found that uh, they have a limiting profile with trapped bubbles at well, I think it's h over lambda is 0 0.73. Later, 20 years later, Kinnersley working on the, on the problems which you've seen before. So the first one is in infinite depth, so we have a capillary wave in infinite depth. The second one is on the pre it's this previous sketch, so we have like two upper and lower surface and uh, fluid between them, capillarity only. And again, Kinnersley managed to find out exact solutions, but in a much more complicated form and involving Cnoidal, sinoidal, and so on, uh, all this uh, function, elliptic function. Uh, later, Crowd, Diane Crowdy simplified a little bit this, uh, the formulas for, for the wave, for the symmetric waves. Um, there are two types of waves in this case, symmetric and anti-symmetric, when uh, the troughs are on top of troughs or troughs on top of, on top of uh, crest. Uh, new solutions have been found which bifurcate from the symmetric branch, which are no longer symmetric or anti-symmetric, uh, by Mark Blight and uh, Jean Marc. Uh, and uh, what you want to do is study stability of some of those things. Okay, so stability. Uh, in, in deep water, uh, for superharmonic perturbation, uh, which I'm sure everybody knows what I'm talking about, uh, perturbation is the same wavelength or, uh, or more or less than the, the, ba the, the, the base wave. Um, so Hogan have studied these problems using a formulation by Logan Hingis. Um, Chen and Sahman previously has looked at the supermonic perturbation, but again for small amplitudes, an h over lambda was 0.12. And uh, four years ago, uh, Roxana Tiron and uh, William Choi have um, studied both of those uh, using uh, conformal mappings. And actually, that's, um, that was the motivation for our work. And uh, actually, like two years ago, we met William Choi here at Banff and we discussed about these problems a little bit. So um, our formulation, we're going to generalize uh, Tiron's and the Choi formulation for two layer, for two surfaces, and we're going to study against superharmonic, subharmonic, for symmetric, anti-symmetric bifurcations. There's plenty of things. Okay, so again, you've seen uh, these things so already this morning, but again, there's no gravity on this thing. So uh, uh, gamma and so on is the substantial, uh, kappa is the curvature. You have uh, the upper wave, the, the lower wave. Um, uh, equation. Uh, this is the physical plane, so y bar is the upper in some sense because we have no gravity. And b bar, the lower one. Uh, as usually in these problems, you have to find out phi, y bar, and b bar. We're going to rewrite this one in terms of the surface variables, as, uh, as I say, some of the people have done in the past. Uh, and we use uh, this formulation, which was um, given by uh, Diachenko and later but by and Kamasa re reformulate a little bit. So the idea is to use conformal mappings and go from the from physical plane in a sort of a max, uh, less rectangle. When this H, some people call it conformal modulus. Um, so the point is to find out now this function f and g. So I'm using, uh, again, complex uh, functions, which they satisfy that, the, that the f plus ig is analytic in this strip. And uh, we have to find out g subject to Laplace equation, and uh, being equal to with these two y and y bar functions on the lower and the, up, and, and the upper boundary. If, well, we're well, assuming we're we'll for periodic waves, so uh, yeah, expand in, in Fourier series. And uh, we find our solutions uh, uh, subject to these uh, this boundary conditions for uh, g. And uh, because we, will, we like to have the same uh, period between uh, the x and the psi in some sense. Uh, we're going to ask that uh, whatever, eight, that one has to be one, basically. 
So that's uh, our uh, solution. AN and BN are unknown. We can, uh, again, using the, the Cauchy Riemann, uh, those three equations, uh, remember whose x and y is uh, f and g roughly. Capital X and capital Y are the physical ones. Uh, small x and small uh, x carré or x hat uh, are the, the variables in the, in the conformal plane. Oh, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, and uh, the, the, so the links between them is uh, given by uh, using some non-local operators. And uh, just to mention that in the infinite case, uh, basically T will become the Hilbert, uh, Hilbert transform. And they, they, they look complicated, but they actually act quite nicely on the, on the Fourier, using the Fourier FFT uh, technique. Okay, so um, I, the similar stuff, so we find out links between uh, uh, Psi and, and Phi, uh, when the Phi and Psi are just the values of the potential and of the stream functions at the surfaces. So we managed to reduce the problems only on the, on the surfaces. So we have the kinematic condition. You can obtain this one uh, looking at the function Z T over Z Psi when Z is X plus I Y. And assume this is analytic. And again, a similar one for the lower wave. And uh, so we have to solve the following. So we, we can... Uh, Ex uh, express x as a function of phi, psi is a function of phi, so we have like two equations on the free surface, or, oh, sorry, on the upper surface, and another two for the lower one, and the unknowns will be y, phi, y hat, and, uh, and phi hat. Now, uh, first let's, uh, well, let's see what is the base wave, so uh, again, in principle, you can use the elliptic function, uh, the elliptic solutions given by Kinesley, but they're quite complicated to use, so I prefer to calculate them numerically, we did check them, to see if they're coincide, and they do. And uh, those are my parameters I'm going to play this conformal modulus and, and uh, some uh, speed, the wave speed. I can use the physical sheet thickness if I want, but uh, for some reason I choose uh, this the other age. So, what, uh, what's the base wave? Um, so that's a, I, mean, I chose some age. Again, in the Small amplitude of linear wave limit, both edges are the same. So you have a, a, this is a, a typical symmetric wave for a, a slight, but it's already non linear. And uh, it ends up in a, in a trapped bubble in both uh, up, upper and lower uh, surface. And that's happened for every choice of uh, age. Is that a result of a continuation in C? Uh, I do continuation in C, yes, I fix uh, H equal 4, I start from the uh, linear uh, C and, and then I just slowly increase uh, the continuation and then I have to stop here. I mean, I can go, for, but it starts to be non-physical. So, um... I don't know, in trained air bubbles? Yes, yeah, you can, you can put some bubbles, I think Jamal has some papers on this, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, this is the anti-symmetric one and again, Chris are on top of troughs. And again, this is, again, I started from the linear one, for the small one, I do continuation in, in C. And I end up in something like this. So this, the fluid is here, on this sort of uh, band. And yeah, <laughs> next solution. And uh, you, you do entrap bubbles by difference, you know, because the whole uh, uh, sheet is uh, entrapped in the bubble. And uh, so I'm starting from the, this is the linear one, for the linear, uh, the linear velocity, linear speed. When you have uh, the linear uh, theories, just uh, obtain the. Again, I, I, it's, uh, it's slightly misleading because I, I, uh, I lost the k because I non dimensionalized this lambda. So that's why I don't see any k here. Mm. So depending on which waves I want, I start from here or from here, I go left or right, and, 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 and then obtain the solutions. And uh, in all cases, I stop somewhere when it's, uh, I entrap bubbles. This is for a fixed h. Now, this is uh, the other solutions I, I mentioned. Uh, so that's, in some sense, motivation one, one of the motivations. It's um, uh, the Mark and the Jean-Marc have found some solutions when, uh, as you can see, there is no longer uh, symmetric or anti-symmetric. I mean, the fluid's again here, but those things uh, sometimes in drop bubbles and so on. It's, and they, they, they managed to find out up to three solutions, up to three different branches, depending on age. So for some cases, you find only one. And that's again, it's branch to one, call it, and so on, and again it ends up in some sort of bubble here. And then that's a slightly different type of, uh, of uh, bifurcation branch when uh, 
So the, the previous ones, as you can see, we, they started with three waves with the same, uh, whatever, amplitude. And then uh, if you play with the, Jac when the Jacobin is zero of the numerical uh, method, you can go in the direction of whatever, uh, the zero eigenvector and so on, and find out solutions which are not symmetric or symmetric. Can you, can you, do you have something to say about the, the form of the solutions at those bifurcation points, at those zero Jacobian points? For those zero? ones? Yeah. I don't think you can, I don't know. Could you see it, that it would be a bifurcation point, or you, you, So say you look at the Jacobian, so when you do this uh, numerically, the, you, you, you calculate the Jacobian. And when this recommend is zero, then you, there's a sign that there may be a bifurcation. I understand that, but look at the form that you have at that point. Does, can you see geometrically that there would be a bifurcation? Uh, I don't know. So for uh, I'm thinking of like some symmetry break. We, we don't, I don't know. We didn't look for these things. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> And I mean, so this one is slightly different one. Uh, so for this one, I'll come later a bit. So that, that's, that's, you can see some sort of link to some instability, actually, of the problems, the, the bifurcation for this one. Again, I'm showing only the limiting ones here. The, when, uh, there's, there's much closer, closer to the linear stuff <laughs> when, when they start. So this is the like, sort of three branches. Um, I'm, I'm going to spend not much time on them. Uh, so I'm going to the main problem now of the stability. So um, you perturb the capital X, capital Y now are the, are the steady ones. Um, you perturb them, it's all these field uh, things, you have like eight of them. Um, expand them. You, you use the Floquet theory, and uh, again, uh, this is the, 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 the Floquet um, coefficient, parameter, whatever it's called. And uh, you linearize the, the, the equations, uh, and you're going to look for this sigma to see if it has a real positive part or not, to see if it's stable or not. And uh, the announce will be all this an, bn, cn, bn, and, uh, and the, the, corresponding, um, the corresponding one on, on the other surface. So uh, again, you put all this in the, in the, uh, in the linear, linearized problems, and you obtain some huge matrices, 8n plus 2 uh, by 8n plus 2. And you're going to solve them using some, uh, it's a generalized eigenvalue problem, so you use uh, some MATLAB routines, and you manage to solve them, hopefully. And so again, for small amplitude basis, you'll obtain something which looks like uh, uh, the dispersion relation as you see before. But uh, because you're in a moving frame, so I forgot to say this, uh, you obtain the other minus IP prime C. So P prime is in some sense the wave number of the perturbation, which is, uh, again, you can uh, write it as a P plus M when it's P between 0 and 1. So super, super harmonic one, the one which is the same wavelength, or let's say it's less than that. When b equals zero, subharmonic when p is less than zero, it is zero and one. And again, because of various symmetries, I actually can uh, restrict this one to zero and one over two. And uh, in infinite depth, just a reminder of what happens. So uh, I, I'm talking about the theory and showing these results. Um, the, super, the, the waves are stable to super, super harmonical perturbation, but unstable to subharmonic ones. So what happens in our case? So now I'm starting to plot uh, our eigenvalues. So what you, what you see here, it's, um, so again, there's infinity of them. For each m, you find out infinity of those things. At small amplitude, when, the, the, when you have like a plot the okay, linear limit, all of them are on the, on the imaginary axis. So the question is, do they get out of the axis or not? And uh, so, this, so in this case, whatever, depending on, for a symmetric base, go to the left for anti symmetric go to the right in some cases and so on. So in this case, this is my, my, my small amplitude solutions. They're all on the axis, but sometimes you can see that some of them actually collide. And if I look at the real part, at the real part of the same things of this sort of region A and B, you find some real sigma R bigger than zero. Again, it's symmetries, you have plus, minus, the, you obtain four of them and so on. So you always, if you get off the, uh, the imaginary axis, you'll find out this, uh, this instability. So uh, again, I'm sure that everybody here is familiar. So what happens if you have these two, or in some cases, uh, imaginary eigenvalues, you change the parameters, the, the speed, or if you want the amplitude of the wave, they collide and they get off the axis and you find, find this bubble instability. Now, uh, 
I mean, I choose various values of h. So it's, uh, in some sense, OK, this happened for any, any kind of h. But for large h, um, now it's a sort of enlargement of a different case around the 0. You start again from 0. They have some imaginary eigenvalues, and they collide, and they go on the real axis. They collide at 0. So it's a slight difference from what happens here. So you go at some sort of finite or high frequency collision to this case when, uh, again, you have zero real part and then you have two plus minus sigma r. And uh, so again, they collide like that on, on zero and they get off on the real axis. And uh, so this is happening for any edge. And for edge large, this point tends towards Cs. So it means that this is the first instability you're going to see, not the other one. For small capital H, you see the other one. So this one moves to the left. What happens with the amplitude of this uh, sigma r at a given c minus c, let's say here, this one tends to zero. So at infinity, this uh, instability is going to disappear. So uh, I'm plotting here the log of sigma of r as a function of h. I have the function. At, let's say at a 0 0.1 difference from the cs in each case. And they, they decay exponentially with, uh, I think, h over 2 slope. So at infinity, you'll have no, uh, no, n none of this. Now, um, it was, well, we can say, well, maybe it's, uh, it's good to like, uh, confirm these things. You're doing some uh, evolution uh, in time of, of these uh, eigenvectors corresponding to these unstable eigenvalues. So uh, again, this is the equation we've seen before. Well, we do some Runge Kuta in time, and again, special derivatives in Fourier space, and so on. We put as initial condition, so we compute the eigenvalues, which is uh, unstable, we think. Uh, and uh, we take the eigenvector and put it as initial condition for these things and see what happens. And I'm plotting only the perturbation here. So this is the perturbation y bar, or the upper one. I think the lower one is minus that one. And uh, the dashed one, for example, here, it's the, this, this line, the 0 0.17 and so on exponential of that, that one. And you see that our perturbation is actually following this, this, uh, this uh, it's growing at this rate. It's periodic because you have also this, uh, this imaginary part. And uh, this is again happening for the, for the first type of, uh, of instability. And this is what happens for the second one when we have only real eigenvalues. And um, so there's no imaginary part. And in this case, again, I plotted the numerical one and exponential of this one. And as you can see, it's, uh, it's, it shows quite clearly that it's, go, it's following the, the expected trend given by this instability. So they're growing in time. And here you see, I, I should forget to mention that the, the, the circular ones are given by just the solution exponential of sigma and so on. And the other ones are numeric, starting from zero and doing all these uh, fully nonlinear computations. Okay, so this is the symmetric case. Let's say the print of cases. The anti-symmetric one, it's in some sense similar. Now, again, in this case, I'm starting from here actually. So I change my CS is now the cot of h over 2 square rooted, not the tang. That's why I see a. And you see again, you start some eigenvalues from here, and one from there. This one cross another one, and they collide, and they form again the bubble of instability. I'll come back to this graph, graph a little bit later, if I have time. So it's sort of a similar uh, uh, picture. <coughs> now, um, this is superharmonic, so there's, there, there are unstable, the anti-symmetric branches are unstable also to superharmonic perturbation. For the subharmonic, you find, uh, again, instability in most case, in all the cases, so I just choose p equal to half, for example, here. I'm plotting uh, in the same graph, just to make economy of space if you want. Uh, the real part and the imaginary part, circles are the real part, and the other ones, the dots are the imaginary part. You can see two imaginary eigenvalues starting from here colliding, and then you have a complex one, and then here they actually go on the real axis, and they, they move on the real axis, and so on. And uh, this is, uh, this is for the symmetric base. This is for the anti-symmetric base. It's, again, starting from zero. And this is the imaginary real part. It, you find out in all cases that after some time, you start to see various instabilities. Which, again, uh, this is similar with the infinite depth case. For the superharmonic, it's, it's sort of new. 
And uh, for people who like this sort of uh, eight uh, shape, uh, so we play with the, we, we fix it basically some values of C minus C A here, for example. And uh, we play with parameter P, varying from zero to one, and we obtain the kind of almost an eight shape. And those ones are like sort of L, from ellipses. Uh, the eigenvalues of the crosses, we just fit the ellipses, the best fit ellipse. So this is a similar with uh, Bernard and uh, Cathy's pictures for the gravity waves, and a different problem. Let's say this for fun. Uh, okay, how about the bifurcation branches that are stable? And again, this is just show why we pick one. And, uh, and uh, as you can see, you have bubbles of instability. This is the, the real part. So I mentioned before, so the, the bifurcation, so in the, for the third branch, uh, the bifurcation solution corresponds to the instability on, on, the, on, the, on the main branch. So when you have this sort of... Uh, Copy to this. So this one. So you have some some instability at this point, and we also have the same point starting of the application branch three, as, as we call it. So there is a link between these these two phenomena. So um, okay. Now um, in the last few minutes, we try to explain in some cases uh, what happens trying to use the current signature of a disturbance. So we followed Mackay and someone and they looked for the energy and so on. And uh, for small amplitude waves, you can write this uh, in a, of a moving frame uh, in this form when P is the momentum and uh, CF is, the, is the, the speed of the frame, which can be CS or CA. So you can, uh, again following Mackay, you can uh, look at this E if it's positive or negative. It means uh, that they have uh, different signatures. You can uh, define the positive when it's positive or negative and when it is less than zero. And it's easy to, to calculate for small amplitude disturbances. And uh, again, it's the same sort of idea. So basically, it comes out that the sign of E is uh, depending on the speed of, uh, of your perturbation minus the, the, the frame speed. When the frame speed is either, uh, where, where this one, uh, so you can have symmetric perturbation on symmetric base, anti-symmetric perturbation on the symmetric base, and the other around. So there are like four types of things that can, 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 can happen at the same time. And you can find out easily, again, the, in the limit when amplitude tends to zero, the sign as, uh, as defined in the uh, following my K. So uh, I'm coming back for this anti-symmetric mode. So here we find out some instability. So we have one eigenvalues, probably crossing another one, and meeting this one and, and getting all the axes there. Now, the only trouble is, so you can calculate the sign, is that they have the same sign. So, I have two uh, eigenvalues with the same sign, apparently colliding and producing instability. Now, the theory of McKay and someone, as I understand it, is said that uh, this cannot be done, because uh, it, it, it preserves the signature and, and they have to be, have the opposite sign. No, no, they can collide, they just cannot bifurcate into instability. Yeah, 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 they can collide, yeah. Now, again, in our case, there are two explanations which we think that maybe that why, what, what is happening in our case. So first is, as you can see, it crosses another one here. So it may be some sort of avoided, avoided crossing. So maybe this one is just bumping off the other one, and actually it's not meeting this one here, but this one, I don't know. I mean, numerically, it seems they, they, they cross, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> Another one which, which we thought is that maybe the, the theory of McKay it applies for a non degenerate Hamiltonian system. So in our case, if you write in our, in our variables, uh, so the system is something like uh, M, Z, T, whatever, graph of uh, H, and Z. When Z is our X, Y, X hat, Y hat, Phi, and Phi hat. And the trouble is that M is it's singular. So, uh, uh, you can find out, it, it, it has a zero, yeah, it, it's singular. So the theory of McKay, as far as I remember, is something that the other around is J grad Z of H, and it assumes specifically that J is not singular. So maybe because we're, I don't know, our formulation depends on whatever in our, uh, in our variables, maybe that's why we cannot apply the McKay theory here to explain what we've seen. So again, this is what we think, all of this will. So that's what you've seen in the last uh, half an hour. And uh, I should leave you to this one, so I just, if you want to come to Norwich next year. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.
Any questions? Well, you've had a few questions during the presentation. Yeah, okay. Anything else? Oh. What if instead of air you have fluids on? Oh, I'm not sure how you can generalize this one. It's, I mean, this one for problem mapping, uh, it may be more difficult if you have two fluids on top of each other. No, that's the. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I asked the question. <laughs> so we just. Yeah. yeah um, it's a very interesting work. Um, there is current strong interest in, in calculating the, the formation of bubbles during this function. So, in these calculations, which is very actually simple numerics, uh, how, how could uh, your analytics be guiding for these uh, computations? I mean, for the bubbles? Kind of the opposite end. So, okay. If 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 you would like to have a reference, you can use your results as a reference. Well, what what can they be used for? Yeah. Okay. That's <laughs> a good question. So, um, I mean, this this is uh, it's again it's, it, when Taylor has studied this problem, it, it's applying more like a breakup of liquid sheets, and uh, again. I don't know, we have also air, some, some of the stabilities are there, so I'm not sure if it's that straightforward, this one. I mean, we have to do some tests on the space station, maybe. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you were to squirt a fluid out into another fluid, which had the same density. Yeah. I mean, yeah, as Paul is saying, it, it may be more difficult to apply our method on that particular case, because to conform mapping, we have to introduce some other I, files. And, yeah. <laughs> Okay, no more questions. Then, um, well, thank you, Emilio. Then you can press the button.